Hello there, good morning and welcome to this, the WP Builds weekly WordPress newsletter. This is number 115. It covers the WordPress news for the week commencing the 18th of May 2020 and it was published on Monday the 25th of May, also in 2020. My name's Nathan Wrigley and a couple of housekeeping bits just before we begin. Please head over to wpbuilds.com. That's where you'll find everything that we do. The easiest way to keep up to date with what we do is to head to wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. And over there, there's things like links to our Facebook group, YouTube channel, a couple of email lists to sign up to, want to be notified of content that we produce and want to be notified about deals as soon as we hear about them. There's also ways to subscribe to us on your favorite podcast player as well. So that's wpbuilds.com forward slash subscribe. Also, wpbuilds.com forward slash deals. If you are in the market this week for a particular WordPress product or service, head over to that page. You never know. It's 24-7, 365 days of the year, and the deals just never disappear. The deals that you see yesterday, so far at least anyway, have been the deals that you'll see every day thus far. So yeah, if you've ever seen a product on that page, it's very, very, very likely to still be there. So keep checking back. We're adding new ones all the time wpbuilds.com forward slash advertise if you've got a product or service that you would like to be put in front of a WordPress specific audience we can help you out with that and there's a couple of companies that have done that this week the first of which is Kinsta are you tired of unreliable or slow hosting if so, check out Kinsta, who takes managed WordPress hosting to the next level. Powered by the Google Cloud Platform, all their plans include PHP 7, SSH, and 24-7 expert support. Try a demo free for 60 days at kinsta.com. And AB Split Test. Want to set up your AB Split Tests in record time, like in a couple of minutes? Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, really anything. And the best part is that it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder and the WordPress Block Editor. You can check it out at absplittest.com. And we thank Kinsta and AB Split Test for helping us to put on the WP Builds weekly WordPress news. Speaking of weekly WordPress news, I do, of course, every single week go live 2 p.m. in the WP Builds Facebook group. You can find that at wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook or on our live page, which is forward slash live 2 p.m. UK time. This week, I should be joined by Anshin LaRue and Bernard Grineau. So come and join us. It's very, very nice to have you making the comments. Right. Let's get on with the news for this week, shall we? We always divide our WordPress news up into different sections and the first section, as always, is WordPress core. Couple of items for you this week. The first one over on WordPress Tavern is Justin Tadlock writing Gutenberg 8.1 includes a block copying, testimonials pattern and patterns UI update. So the Gutenberg plugin has gone up now to version 8.1.0 and exactly as the title says, you've now got the ability to copy a block. Uh, uh, it's exactly what you would expect. You you have to sort of search for the menu item, but when you find it, you can copy a block and then it's kind of held in your computer's clipboard, if you like, and then you could find the exact place you wanted to insert it on the page and go over there and simply paste it in. So it does make the, the whole process of putting copied blocks into different parts of your page a little bit easier. We're not quite up to the capabilities of, say, a page builder yet with dragging them around and so on, but yeah, very nice. The other one is to say that there's been a testimonials pattern. Now, a pattern is a collection of blocks, really, um, that are put together under one heading. And in this case, the testimonials pattern is, as you would see on many current websites, three little uh, horizontally arranged uh, blocks and each of them has a quote in it with a an image of the person saying it plus their name and so you can now simply find this by looking for the testimonials pattern and then you can obviously go into each one and adapt it as needed put the correct photograph in and so on and so forth this brings the total to eight of these testimonial patterns but it feels to me like this is going to be a huge growth area in the future i can imagine developers really jumping on this and and coming up with all sorts of different patterns that we can then hopefully use on our websites. 
We've also got the ability to uh, search. There's an inserter UI search field. So when you go to click the little plus icon, there's now a search option. So you could type in, for example, oh, let's say on Justin's example, he uses the word space. And then you can filter down either by blocks. So is there a block which contains the word space in it? Or perhaps even a pattern. There's a little uh, grumble that he has because the, the, the way it's displayed doesn't exactly make clear whether you're searching for a block or a pattern but it's there there's also a few little bits and pieces which I won't mention here but you can read for yourself on this post uh, about the API changes which developers might want to look into anyway it's more of a kind of incremental release this one nothing particularly dynamic but nevertheless a nice little update Staying on WordPress Tavern and Justin Tadlock again, PHP and WordPress version checks coming to themes. So if you are a theme developer, you're probably going to be delighted about this. You can now specify in your theme, or at least you will do by the time WordPress 5.5 comes out, should it land at that point, um, you'll be able to specify what version of PHP it is that you would say your theme needs. Up until this point, it's been a complicated system. Plugin developers have had the ability to specify the minimum PHP version for quite some time, but not theme developers. They had to kind of come up with a manual way of doing this all by themselves, which involved various kludges. But from this point on, assuming it does land in core in 5.5, you will be able to specify. Now, it's not entirely clear whether theme authors will wish to stick with the, the older versions of PHP, simply because there's obviously a wider potential of deployment, or perhaps bump everybody up to 7. PHP version 7. Anyway, the, the screen over on the WordPress repo uh, says what the version number is of the theme itself. It says when it was last updated, how many active installations, and obviously it will always have said what version of WordPress was supported. And now joining that right at the bottom, which version of PHP is supported. So hopefully this will give clarity to theme authors and to people who are downloading those themes. And so you know, less support questions coming out because people mistakenly downloaded a theme which was actually never going to work with their version of PHP. The next section is called Community, and I'm staying on WP Tavern and Justin Tadlock, so he's bagged the first three spaces. Um, he's got an article this week entitled WordPress Theme Review Team Changes Name Now, The Th Themes team. So up until recently, the, this team was called the Theme Review Team, and it's decided to change its name really because that isn't kind of what they did. Prime. Well, it is what they did primarily, but it's not the only thing that they did. And there was some confusion, I think, for people who were looking for something to do and wished to join a particular WordPress related team. And but they perhaps didn't wish to review themes. Perhaps they wanted to get involved in some other way in the work that 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 team does. So it's now simply called the themes team and obviously that's a little bit broader in scope they do do quite a lot so in the article it says um, we realized that we were doing all these theme related things work on 2020 coding standards meta stuff reviews helping out with full site editing in any capacity we can etc and so just being the theme review team didn't make any sense anymore and so that is now who you will be submitting your themes to should you wish to do that there's a little bit at the bottom about how the team is evolving and what scope they hope to have in the future but obviously good to know that this is now a little bit broader and hopefully it'll bring in some new blood. You may have noticed that the WordPress charity WP and Up has actually changed its name of late. They're now called Big Orange Heart. And the reason that they've changed their name is because they wish to expand their remit and move into well, assisting people who they describe as remote workers. So it's no longer just WordPress people. They're very much aligned with the WordPress community and intend for that to be a huge part of what they do in the future. But today, if you were looking to support a uh, big orange heart, but you, you up until this point haven't felt you could make a donation, I'm linking you to their shop. And their shop contains things like mugs and it contains things like hoodies and caps and stickers and so on. And so if you wanted to get something in return for your donation, the profits from this particular shop will be going directly to big orange heart and doing people an awful lot of good in the future. And I'll have a further story about something very similar in a few minutes time. One of the consequences of the times we're living in and the COVID-19 
is that a lot of the events that we may have been attending have been forced to go online. One such event is WordCamp Kent, which is going to be um, working heavily towards business and marketing. It starts on the 30th of May, so that's in just a few days' time, and it runs for two days, so the 30th and the 31st of May. The tickets are free for anyone, and so this is a really nice opportunity if you have an interest in marketing and you have an interest in that kind of thing, business, marketing, and so on, with less of an emphasis towards the developer side of things, then this could be of interest to you. So we're thinking about people like freelancers, agency owners, product business owners, and those kind of things. The schedule is linked to in the article that I'm linking to, which again is on WordPress Tavern, and so you never know if you're feeling like you would like to try out an event like this maybe this is a good one it's kind of been not on my radar in all honesty but the fact that it is you know trying to facilitate this particular audience and also the fact that the tickets are completely free means that it's well worth a punt I would have thought so go and check out the links in the show notes and you'll be taken to the page I found this next piece on the talkmag.io blog. It's entitled Your Guide to Using WebP Images on WordPress Sites. Up until now, I expect that most of us, whether we've been optimizing images or not, I expect most of us have used JPEG or PNG images. However, there's a new person in town and that person's name is WebP. The the whole point is that it's able to offer high quality or higher quality media with smaller file sizes, which is obviously a bit of a win for everybody. I have a memory that it was Google who initially did this, although I could have got that completely wrong. But it's not something that you can do directly in WordPress. So you have to you have to take a few steps. And that's what this little article is about. An introduction to WebP images, how they work, what they look like, what they're made up of, how they might speed things up on your website. And they've also got a, a useful little plugin which they recommend called Web. P Express. It converts new PNG and JPEG images into the WebP standard, and but it keeps the originals. So if there's a browser which your end user is using which doesn't support WebP, then it will serve up the original file instead, which is quite nice. And I expect that that um, that plugin is free, although I haven't checked it out. But it's a nice little nice little piece, getting you up to date with well the latest and greatest image technology. There's been an awful lot of talk recently about the the capability in the next version of the block editor, Gutenberg, you might know it as, to offer full site editing. Um, And the the guys over at WP Engine have put together an article this week entitled Full Site Editing, The Future of Building with WordPress. And it's written by uh, venerable WordPress user Carrie Dills, who has a, a very nice long piece about how this all goes together. She's very, very experienced, so it's it's really nicely laid out. She talks about what actually full site editing is and talks about the nomenclature, how you need to describe things using the correct terminology. So, you know, what is a block? What is a block pattern, as we just mentioned? Um, what are templates and how are they constructed? What are the, the correct ways to, to give them names and the structure that they need to have and so on? And then she goes into talking about things like template parts, giving some code examples and so on, how uh, user-edited te- user templates are created and so on and so forth. And it's really a nice long piece explaining everything. And I think it's the kind of thing that many of us will wish to dabble with when this technology finally comes around no longer will it necessarily be the the option to always go out and purchase a theme which we then stick with perhaps some of us will start to to play with this a little bit more and work out how we can do it for ourselves and so this seems like a good primer for that so yeah go and check out Carrie's work on the WP Engine blog Next section is plugins, themes, and blocks. The first one is a very exciting project. It's called Iceberg, and it's got a really specific use case. They describe it as write beautifully in WordPress, and the whole point of it really is that you you would require a much more straightforward, simplistic interface. Now, I know that Gutenberg is a fairly straightforward, simplistic interface, but this one takes things to a different level. It's got very, very minimal theme editing capabilities, you you have the ability to add markdown and a few writing options so for example you can alter the font size the line height the line width paragraphs spacing and so on and the ability to change uh, some simple things like colors and what have you but other, other than that 
it, it doesn't really offer very much. But when I say that, I'm kind of doing it a disservice because it looks beautiful, really straightforward. And I produce quite a lot of content, which is simply text. And this looks like a really interesting way of really offering an incredibly distraction-free interface. Uh, currently, it looks like they're selling it for $49. I don't know if there's a version which you can have uh, for free anywhere. I've also linked in the show notes to the the WordPress Tavern article, which Sarah Gooding has put together, in which she talks about how it's a really nice distraction-free writing mode. But Trying to describe it is virtually impossible. The only way to do do it justice is to go and have a look at it. Click on one of the two links somewhere. My understanding is that Rich Tabor himself put together a, what I can only describe as a really nicely done video showing what it's capable of and manages to do that in just a few short seconds. But it's absolutely lovely. So well done, guys. I think this is going to be something that I might very well purchase just for the utter distraction-free capabilities. Looks really nice. Now, somewhat coincidentally, although I'm sure not by intention, we have a piece on WordPress Tavern IA Writer adds expanded support for indie web tools and WordPress publishing. Now, I say coincidental because this tool is another tool which is offering a minimal writing experience. Now, I know it's available for Mac and iOS. I don't know if it's available on any other platforms. I believe that's the limitations. But it is another interface a little bit like the iceberg one but obviously running on your computer or your device Uh, it has the capability to publish things to wordpress and that is being pushed forward but they've got uh, a nice update and i just thought i'd mention it simply because it looks and seems to want to do the same things as the iceberg plugin i mentioned just a moment ago and uh, obviously if you want to have things directly on your mac if you see a benefit in that then this might be a good tool. If you write as part of a team, you may have some sort of editorial requirements before you finally click publish on your WordPress posts. And a tool which really is very, very capable in this area is called Publish Press. You can set up a whole ton of checklists. So for example, it must have a certain number of words. It must have a featured image. There must be some kind of excerpt written and so on and so forth. And you can delegate things to teams and put things in calendars and what have you. And now they've added the capability so that some particular users can skip some of the tasks. So as an example, if you're the administrator of a site and you would like to be able to jolly well publish something, whether or not you fulfill the criteria which you'd set up for everybody else, well, you can now do that. You can kind of disable certain things. So let's say a featured image is required. Well, everybody who doesn't have the administrator role, well, they'll still need to add that featured image. But you can say to yourself, well, I'm I'm not going to need that. This is my website. I run it and I can jolly well choose whether I have that or not. So now you can do that. You've got the capability to switch off all sorts of things, you know, like whether it's got categories, whether tags have been added, the num- the word count being a certain number. And as I've just talked about excerpts and so on, all of that can now be disabled on a user role basis. This is something that we don't get too often. This is the renaming of a plugin. This is to say that WP Security Audit Log has been renamed um, to simply WP Activity Log. Robert Abella writing on the WPActivityLog.com website, which I presume is newly registered, uh, says exactly that. He goes into a bit of history about why this is. And in all honesty, I think this just makes perfect sense. The the name WP Security Audit Log, I always felt that was a little bit long and, and a little bit confusing because it kind of mixes up the two things. Is it a security plugin? Does it offer features of security? Will it in harden my website in some way? Or, or is it is it an audit you know does it offer audit trails for everything or does it do both what's going on there and so he's decided to to make it simple because most people want to according to him get to the the activity log of all the different things that people have been doing on their websites so they've put that front and center and uh, makes more sense as far as i can see so good luck with the the sales robert hopefully now that you've got a a clearer branding that will uh, that will enable you to uh, to make it easier to pitch 
Hardly a week goes by where we don't talk about Elementor, and this week is no different. However, it is something different that we're talking about because it's not about some kind of feature that they've added or some template that they've added. This is simply to say that they've reached 5 million active installs. Now, I don't know whether those 5 million are heavily skewed towards the free version on WordPress.org repo, or if there's a significant proportion of pro, it doesn't really matter. 5 million, a huge, huge number. Apparently, only a few other people, the following, uh, Takayuki Miyoshi, Team Yoast and Automatic, they are the only other people to be in this laudable place of 5 million in installs. And so this piece is really just to say thanks. Elementor, according to their own data, now accounts for 7%. Uh, overall WordPress websites. So seven out of a hundred websites using WordPress have in some way, shape or form got Elementor put on, them, put on them. And Elementor, their new users, 30% of them are coming to them and using WordPress uh, for the first time. So they're obviously a big driver of WordPress. So congratulations, very well done. Five million, boy, I wonder when they'll get to 10. BuddyPress doesn't get talked about too much, but uh, I do know a few people who've deployed it recently for things like virtual summits and what have you. And so here we are, BuddyPress 6.0.0, released with new group and members blocks. Uh, Sarah Gooding writing on WordPress Tavern. And it's exactly that. They have new group and members blocks. So if you want to go in, once you've got BuddyPress installed, you can now add those in from the blocks inserter. There's a few different options. Obviously, when you click on the particular block, you've got the option to customize that. So uh, let's have a look. It says there are endpoints for blogs blog avatar friends group cover image member cover image and user signups so you know go check it out if this is your thing and you're using it you might be interested and apparently the next round of releases they're going to do block versions of existing widgets and community requested blocks so keep your eyes peeled on that too Last plugin theme and block bit is over on the iThemes website. It's a piece entitled iThemes Security Pro Roadmap, Three Big Plans for 2020. It's a plugin which I'm sure a lot of people have deployed at some point. Perhaps you're using it on every single WordPress website, but they make the point that they've been hard at work. So they've had their heads down and they, they feel that they've kind of dropped the ball a bit, so to speak, about updating people about what, what they've been doing and, and what the roadmap is. And so this piece, although it's not very long is intended to do that. What is in store? So they talk about the future of iTheme security. Um, what are they going to do? And in uh, just a few short points, they're going to revamp the security site scan. So we've said we've been hard at work creating a new WordPress security scan now powered by iThemes. Building our site scanner has been an extensive undertaking and will require several phases of development before it is complete. That said, each phase will end with a release. So there's going to be a site scan, including vulnerable software check, vulnerability remediation. The site scanner will integrate with iThemes security pro version management feature to automatically update vulnerable software when a patch is available and Google safe browser check. And there'll also be some new future site scan phases. It says we are excited about how powerful the site scanner will be when it's completed. Here's what we have in store. Blacklist status check, file level malware scanning and malware remediation and a new user, sorry, a new improved user experience. And you can read about that yourself and trusted device improvements. And this is a way that they have of adding, adding a layer, limiting which devices can access your WordPress dashboard. And they're going to enhance that in some way. So quite nice that they've made the effort to tell us what they're going to be doing in the future. The next section is called deals and the first couple of links in that are what I usually have. It's first one, a link to our subscribe form. If you want to keep up to date with WordPress deals, I will send you an email should you sign up to that list. So go and get yourself on that because, you know, you don't have to go trawling around all the all the different marketing emails. I'll do all that for you and I'll just send you a little email when I hear about a new deal that's come out. And the other one is the WP Builds Deals page, as I mentioned at the top of the show. That is a searchable, filterable list, always on 365 days of the year. And so far, no deal that's been put on there, as far as I remember, has been pulled off. So it's 20% off this, 30% off that. So go and check that out. The other ones are 
We've got a new deal, Amelia, which is a WordPress booking plugin. That's available for $49. That's a lifetime deal. WP Reset, Link Whisper has got 25% off. Pobla for automatically posting to your social channels. Happy Forms, lifetime deal. Give WP 40% off. If so, an ability to show dynamic content on your website. That's $49 for life. 20% off funnel packs. And Quotas, which is quite an interesting one. It's one of those proposal tools. So it's a tool and online SaaS tool, $49 for life to create proposals to send to your clients. So a few deals this week. Please tell me about any that you find out about. I'm always interested to know. The next section is security, always a bit of a light touch, and this week is no exception. I've only got two pieces for you. The first one is a piece on the WordFence website. It's called The Elementor Attack, How Creative Hackers Combine Vulnerabilities to Take Over WordPress Sites. I really like this piece because it's kind of like a a rundown of how an exploit is performed. And so it'll probably take you 10 minutes to read. And it's obviously all about the recent, uh, well, compromises that were used against Elementor with things like Ultimate Add-ons for Elementor. So it shows line by line what it is that was used, how it was injected, what was the result, how did it all happen, and what order did you need to do things in. So it's really interesting. I would definitely recommend having a look at that. And the other one is over at the WebArc Security com website um, this is their kind of annual sorry not annual the monthly roundup where they show the little thumbnails of all of the vulnerabilities that they know about from the previous month and I like these ones as I've said because you can just scroll through look at the icons and think hmm I've used that one somewhere and then find out go and get yourself updated read what may have happened so yeah there we go security for this week Please forgive me, I always each week have a WP Builds bit, self-promotional I know, but there you go. Not all self-promotional this week, in all honesty, because the first one I'm linking to is the WP Build store. Now, I mentioned a little while ago that Big Orange Hearts have got a store, and I thought to myself, well, this is interesting. I'm just going to steal that idea. But I'm not stealing the idea in the sense that I'm not kind of setting up a shop and hoping to, uh, you know, kind of steal everything that Big Orange Heart are doing. Quite the opposite. If you go to that page, you'll notice that I'm going to give 100% of any profit that we make over to Big Orange Heart. And so I'm selling a similar range of things, but the difference is, obviously, if you go to the Big Orange Heart store, then you're going to be looking at Big Orange Heart logos. If you go to the WP Builds store, you're going to be looking at WP Builds logos. So WP Builds logos, mugs, and there's logos on T-shirts, and there's logos on caps. What else have we got logos on? There's also logos on hoodies and beanies and all of those kind of things so if you're feeling like you wish to support wp and up and you would like a wp builds logo i would encourage you to go to store.wpbuilds.com and pick something up the other one to mention is that i did a podcast this week with david warmsley it was a debate number 180 entitled woocommerce versus other options we sit on opposite sides of the fence and talk about a particular subject and in this episode it was whether or not we should do woocommerce or whether we should you know use some other option the one that came up again and again was shopify so first of all should you do e-commerce at all or is it too much of a headache And if you decide, yes, e-commerce is important, I need to have it as part of my income, then should you go with Woo or should you go with a different service? So we, we throw this around. We come up with all sorts of interesting ideas so you can listen to that. Click on the link in the show notes, episode 180. That's all the WordPress news I've got for you this week. But don't go away. Don't go away because here's some not WordPress but useful anyway. The first one, I am really pleased that this is going to be coming. This is something to do with the Google Chrome browser. And at the moment, I have about 18, maybe 20 different tabs open. And that's really typical. It often goes way beyond those. And I know that many people just simply don't bookmark things. They just keep them open. And whilst that's fine, it does get a bit cluttered. And it would appear that Google have, in their Chrome browser, taken this to heart. And they're going to be grouping tabs together so you can keep them 
them in little groups. And the UI is basically the same, except that you've got a little kind of colored band which goes around the top of a group. And I can't really describe it, but if you were to look at the, the blog post that I'm linking to, you'll see it right away. You can go to a tab on the top, right click and just add it to a group. You can then name the group, color the group. So for example, I don't know, you've got multiple email tabs open. You could just have an email group and it would say really clearly everything that's blue. Well, that's the email lot. Or you could have a CRM section open or maybe just WordPress sites in development, WP in development or something like that. Anyway, the point is you can now, well, I say now, soon coming, you can group your tags um, and it's going to be so useful for me. Hopefully I will get rid of the enormous clutter that I have at the moment. So definitely worth checking out. I really like this feature. If you haven't given Apple Inc. enough of your hard-earned cash, they figured out a way to part you with some, some of it with something called Apple Glass. It's rumored to start at $499, supports prescription lenses and more. So I'm over on the Mac Rumors website. This is, if you remember the Google Glass experiment where they had this fairly clunky way of putting what looked like a dice-sized cube of glass floating to the top right of your eyes. Well, Apple seemed to have managed to nail this with just completely ordinary looking glasses. If the the image that I'm looking at represents what they actually look like, they are completely indistinguishable from normal glasses. Now, obviously the ability to add prescription lenses, that comes at an extra cost. And it, apparently you can use the lenses. They can be interacted with using gestures. I have no idea how this is going to work. They can be paired to your iPhone, Apple Watch, and so on and so forth. And they use LiDAR technology and wireless charging and all sorts. So who knows when these will come out? Who knows how good they'll be? But uh, interesting, if Apple managed to pull this off in the way that it looks that they're going to pull it off, I can see this being absolutely a slam dunk home run win. Speaking of giant tech companies, Facebook have announced shops for Facebook and Instagram. And it says on the socialmediatoday.com website, after years of working around the edges and trying to find ways to make a bigger dip into e-commerce, the COVID-19 pandemic has finally given Facebook the push it needs to take the start to start the next major step. Today, Facebook has launched shops on both Facebook and Instagram. So simply that, you can now sell things on your Facebook page and no doubt you'll be able to do this in other ways as well perhaps even on your own timeline or what have you and it looks really really nice obviously if you've got a whole catalog of products i've no idea how that setup's going to work you know can you import tons of products all at once how does that work don't know you'll have to go and find out for yourself but you know the audience that goes along with facebook is so tremendously large i cannot imagine why they haven't dipped their feet into this sooner so shop owners well you know go and check out facebook maybe it is time to drop those woocommerce websites after all as we discussed in the podcast i mentioned earlier I don't know how much faith to put in this article, but I'm going to bring it to your attention anyway. It's over on Search Engine Journal, who do know their stuff regarding search engine optimization. And it's a piece entitled, Google launches new podcast promising undocumented information. So if you are an SEO absolute nut job and you really enjoy going thick into the weeds, this may be a podcast you wish to sign up to. It's going to be called, apparently, Search Off The Record. And I don't know on what level they're going to be releasing stuff. You know, whether they'll be drip feeding stuff or sharing absolutely loads of free stuff. Obviously, the moment they announce it, no doubt the rest of us will be informed through various different outlets, such, such as Search Engine Journal. But regular listeners, you never know, you might just get a tiny little edge each week. The last one that I want to mention this week is just so off the off the chart of technology. It's all to do with a cave in France. Fascinating stuff. This is a cave that has been discovered. It was actually discovered a little while ago, but it's only really starting to shed light on on its on its amazing 
hall of things on the inside. Allegedly, it's been discovered through all sorts of scientific processes that it's a 176,000-year-old man-made structures. And when I say man-made structures, it's nothing particularly complicated. Essentially, it's like a circle made of broken off stalag. Now, I'm going to say stalagmites. I think that's the right one, the ones that... Um, the ones that grow down, or is it up? I don't remember. Don't call me over the coals. Anyway, the point is there are two rings which clearly could not have been put there by accident. And this cave kind of like got completely blocked off, rediscovered fairly recently. And so this, as far as we're aware at the moment, is the oldest indication of humans kind of laying things out that weren't natural, making structures 176,000 years old absolutely fabulous. Right, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please do let us know. Come and join us in our Facebook group, wpbuilds.com forward slash Facebook, and let us know. Maybe put a comment on the bottom of the blog post. Maybe tell your friends about the, the podcast. If you find this useful, you know, why keep it to yourself? It's very nice to put it together, but it's also nice to have lots of people listening to it. So go to, I don't know, Apple Podcasts and give it a rating. Anything like that would be most welcome. The WP Builds Weekly WordPress News was brought to you today by Kinsta. Kinsta takes managed WordPress hosting to the next level. Powered by the Google Cloud Platform, your site is secured like Fort Knox and runs on speed obsessive architecture. You get access to the latest software and developer tools such as PHP 7, SSH and staging environments. And the best part, their expert team of WordPress engineers are available 24-7 if you need help. Try a demo for free. 60 days, that is, at kinster.com. And A-B split test. Want to set up your A-B split test in record time? The new A-B split test plugin for WordPress will have you up and running in a couple of minutes. Use your existing pages and test anything against anything else. Buttons, images, headers, rows, really anything. The best part is that it works with Elementor, Beaver Builder, and the WordPress block editor. Go check it out at absplittest.com. And we thank both of them for helping us put on the WP Builds Weekly WordPress News. OK, that's it. Join us at 2pm UK time if you're listening to this on Monday for the live version of this. If not, maybe we'll see you Thursday for the podcast. And perhaps we'll see you on Monday next when we'll do this whole thing again. Bye bye for now. <laughs>